Hello, people. Welcome to Lee Cole 3 Podcast. And I am here with my partner, James Proctor. James, how are you doing today? Hey, Lee. Doing really well. Uh, how are you doing today? Well, you know, we get these interesting days. And, you know, we, we were talking about this uh, whole thing with uh, Goodfellas. Yep. And we were talking basically about uh, uh, Billy Bats. And yep. what was Billy Bats' real name? Yeah, his real name was William Bentfina, and uh, say it three was, times really fast. <laughs> William okay. Bentfina. Went, no, 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 no. <laughs> so it's a, I'm going to be okay. Tied. <laughs> okay, so okay, so let's talk about now. See, this picture has been out, and it's supposed to be him, but I was mm -hmm. reading it's not him. No, I was, I was reading that they, they can't even find a picture of Billy Bats. Did, yeah, did you hear that, anything like that? Yeah, that, that's what I've heard, too, and, and that's actually uh, supposedly a photo of someone named Pat Spirito. He's known as Pat the Cat, and so um, no one has found a photo of, of Billy Bats. So that one's been out there, and, and, it's not, and people have been saying it's Bats, and it's, and it's probably yeah. not. Right, exactly. But as we know, in the movie, he was played by, so we'll just use this picture right here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm sure that if uh, Billy Bats was looking down from hell, um, he, would, uh, he wouldn't mind us, uh, Frank Vincent, playing him. Yeah. Okay, so, so when we talk about the whole beginning of Goodfellas, you see that uh, Bats is murdered, and they talk about why he's murdered. Yep. And they make it all sound like it's because he insulted uh, Tommy D. Simone. Mm -hmm. basically told him to go get his shine box. Yeah. But there was a lot more behind that story, wasn't there? Oh, yeah. There's definitely a lot a uh, lot more behind that story. It goes back, um, you know, a lot of it's involved in um, Jimmy Burke. Uh, you know, in fact, you could argue that Jimmy Burke was more of a reason for, for you know, for Billy Bat's demise than, than Tommy DeSimone. And the reason being is, okay, so here we got Bats. He goes to prison. What year did Billy Bats go to prison? Yeah, so he actually got, and that this was something that was interesting to me. He got caught up in a, a big, uh, you know, basically it was like 20-something mobsters that, that got sentenced. And so he got caught up in all the, the drug convictions that, you know, Carmine Galante and a lot of those guys. So this was around uh, 1960. And then in 63, I believe the, um, what do you call the appeal process had, had completed. So, yep, he got sentenced to eight years in prison and got out uh, around 1970. And he did his time without whining. Yep. Uh, and he expected when he got out that he was going to have his territories back because like a good soldier he went in and uh, did his things, yep. and, but he was a Gambino and he was also friends with John Gotti. They were, you know, at this time, John Gotti was a young guy. He was, he was younger yep. than he was younger than bats, but you know, you got to remember he, John Gotti, even at this time was very respected in the Gambino family. Sure. And, uh, and another guy that uh, was friends uh, was, and we're, we're going to talk about Ronald Foxy Droth mm -hmm. and, uh, We'll, we'll talk about him, too. But these three guys kind of make a uh, – we can kind of put them together here. Yeah, exactly. Okay. And, and listen, whatever we say here, there's no fact about it. We're just going to put something that's been out there and some dates yep. have been checked. Yeah. And uh, to see if people were out of prison at that time. Right. We'll, you know, we'll make our summation. People can write underneath here and tell us what they think about Billy Bats. Right. So, so Billy Bats gets out of prison. Yep. And he wants, he thinks that he's like, okay, I did my time. I'm a made yep. man. Yep. But who has, who's taken over his territories while he's in prison? Yeah. And so that, so that's where the big problem was. So, uh, you know, good old Jimmy, the gent. So James Burke, uh, Jimmy Burke did it. So basically when bats was in prison, the drug and loan shark and rackets that bats had, um, uh, was being run by, Jimmy Burke. And so Bats gets out and, and wants to be able to, you know, he needs to earn again. Basically. And just so people know, Jimmy Burke was played in Goodfellas by Robert De Niro. Yep. Okay. And uh, one of the greatest, you know, acting for an actor probably ever. Uh, 
Yeah. Okay. So, so okay. So uh, he comes out. He, he wants his back, and uh, yeah. Paul Vario does not want to give it back to him. Why doesn't Paul Vario want to? Not, because he's a Gambino. I mean, that that's is a Gambino, and you got the Lacazes that run this old Gambino yep. area. Yeah, I mean that that's that's exactly it. So Paul Vario, they've been running it for several years, eight years in particular, and so yeah, he, he didn't feel like it. He need, he should uh, give him back the the territory. But at the end of the day, the issue is that um, you know Jimmy Burke, you know, is not a, a made guy. He can't be, but he you know he worked with a lot of the families. You and know, see, that's but, what helped. That's Burke's, part of the because problem. Burke was yeah. making a Burke was making a lot more money with that territory than Bats used to make. Yeah, exactly. He he was doing a really good job with it, and you know the. You know, when you look at Goodfellows, see uh, Jimmy Burke, you, you look at him as, you know, he's kind of this wise, not, this good, wise guy. You know, he, you know, at the end, you start seeing, you know, he's a little treacherous. But he was a very evil man. He, he, was, he was a, a very evil man. killer. Yeah, that's what he was. Exactly. He killed his friends. He yes. killed people he knew to cover up a, a, a robbery of the Lathanza. Yeah. Uh, Eight and, of uh, the ten were killed, I believe. That, yes. And, and you know. uh uh, he want, he did not, he, it wasn't even about keeping the money. It was, mm -hmm. he was worried about being pinched for it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And, and that, that's true. And let me take it back. It was for the money, but he was also worried about being pinched for it. When you got that yeah, much yeah, money, right. <laughs> a lot of, a lot of greed comes in. And, yeah, uh, exactly. Yeah. And, and there's been a lot of, um, you know, and this for another show, but there, you know, there's been a lot of, of, of questions about what happened to the money, you know, what happened to the five million in cash, the jewelry, and all that, and a lot of it supposedly was put in a safe deposit box that um, Jimmy Burke's uh, daughters had access to, and um, so, but that'll be for another story. Well, that's that's an interesting story, but we can't. They're out there in the street, and they have. Yeah, to, yeah. God right. bless them. Okay, yeah. <laughs> you know. Uh, but the uh, money's you, gone, though. Is money's gone? Yeah, and you—it's hard to believe that the airport left money that wide open that people can get to pretty easy. When you really yeah, think exactly. about it, because you couldn't get near anything nowadays. Yeah, and that was part of it too. Is the Lacasey family, you know, and also the the Gambinos, and that was a crew that John Gotti was part of um, under Carmine Fatico. They were doing a lot of of stuff at the airport. You know, so there was a lot there, you know, in Queens in the airport, JFK area. It was called Idlewood, I believe, at the point at that point. And so, yeah, definitely, um, you know, a lot of mobsters out there. And, he, and here's the story. Henry Hill, you know, Henry mm -hmm. Hill, about, probably about 20 percent of what he said was true. Yep. There's no doubt that Henry Hill was around these people. Yeah, uh, that's definitely a, a given. But yeah. Henry Hills was like a lot of people that that we see on here on YouTube. If Henry Hill had a show on YouTube, he would be making himself twenty times what he is. Yeah, uh, and that that's true. And and then also, you know, uh, what is interesting to me is when you look at the book. So the the movie was based on the book Wise Guy and uh, Nicholas uh, Pelagi, and the book mentions a lot of things differently than in the movie you know they got to make things they got to make it a hollywood um you know make it interesting but part of it too is that john Gotti is mentioned in wise guy in the book but they don't mention john Gotti in the the movie and that's because you know he was a you know that was kind of exactly. his, uh, he, 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 yeah it's throne. Yeah, when when the movie when see people out there remember when the movie goodfellas was made was made in 88 89 and mm -hmm. came out in 90. Yeah. And so you're you're talking that's the heart of John Gotti's power. Yes. So so you you know that they're going to think twice before they mention his name because he's in yeah. power. Yeah, and exactly. the guys giving this story in Goodfellas, they know he's in power and they know mm -hmm. how he got to the top. Yeah. And uh and there's no one to mess with. Right, exactly. Okay, so and and you know so okay, so we got Billy. Let's go back to Billy Bats now. Billy Bats yep. again. You know he gets out. Of, he gets out of prison. Yeah. So he, he's expecting something to come his way. Nothing's coming his way. So yep. the first time he goes out, they say that he tells Tommy DeSimone. What did he say to Tommy DeSimone? 
Yeah, so basically, and he never made this, you know, the the phrase, you know, about going to get his, his shoebox, uh, or shoebox, <laughs> shine box. And anyway, it, he did mention just saying, recollecting, yeah, I remember when you used to shine shoes. And so, you know, that was basically um, what, what really happened. But anyway, um, what ended up, what ended up happening was that he had he had come home. So that part that part's in the movie. That part's true. And the in first the encounter at the first bar is true. Yes, uh, uh, but we don't know if it was the shine box or if he said, right. "Oh, you're just shining shoes." Right. And Burke, and Burke was there. And yes. you got to remember, Tommy D. Simone was six foot one, and he was two hundred pounds. He yeah. wasn't Joe Pesci. No, no, not at all. And so, you know, this was at the, um, so basically it was a welcome home party. It was at Robert's Lounge. So Jimmy Burke owned that, that, that lounge. So that was an ozone park. And then the other thing is in the movie, they make it sound like that, that, uh, Jimmy Bur or Jimmy Conway is his name. And, um, you know, Tommy, you know, Joe Pesci's character comes back that night and then they, they take out Billy Bats, but the truth is that actually happened two weeks later. And that was whose lounge did he go into two weeks later? Yeah, and so um, that was at oh gosh, um, so it was Robert's Lounge was the original one. I I'm drawing a blank for the second for the okay. second one. Okay, so he goes back oh, to the yeah second. yeah yeah. Uh, it was at Henry Hill's nightclub, the Suite. Okay. So yeah, in Jamaica, Queens. I'm sorry. <laughs> I was, yeah, and is at the suite, which is in which was well, Henry well, Hill's I you something you didn't know, Jim. <laughs> yeah, but Henry Hill's nightclub, the suite. So and right. they're in Jamaica. So yep. So so he's he's in that club, and yeah. uh pretty much what's told is that they they he's in that club and Jimmy Burks is up getting him drunk, has his arm yes. around him, treating exactly. him nicely. Exactly. And then uh and then Tommy D. Simone came in mm -hmm. and he left and went and got a body bag. Yep. And so exactly. they, they, they knew what they were what they had planned. And uh yep. they came, he comes back and and then and see this was two men killing one man. This wasn't just Tommy D. Simone, this was also Jimmy Burks. Right. Jimmy Burke was the one that was actually setting uh Billy Bats up for Tommy. And so, you know, Jimmy was getting him drunk and and then, um, you know, Henry Hill said that, um, so Henry Hill was there, obviously. And then Tommy whispered to him and said, hey, keep him here. I'm going for a bag. And then, you know, that's when, you know, Henry didn't know up until that point, supposedly, that they were going to kill um, Billy right there. So they got the body bag uh, because they didn't want him bleeding all over the place. And anyway, um, he comes back with the bag and then has a 38. So I don't know. Fifteen. And they beat later. him to death with the. They, well, they think they beat him to death with the gun. Yeah. And, and then they put him in the car. Mm -hmm. And they're driving with his body. Yeah. And uh, then they hear the noise, and Tommy D. Simone is pissed. He gets up. Yep. Gets out. There's no mm -hmm. gun shooting in the back like the movie. Uh, they no. beat him to death with a shovel. Yep. They they did. And a tire yeah. iron. Right. That's exactly. how they killed him. There was no gun, no knife like the movie. So it I, it made it more exciting. But uh, I don't know if it's more exciting than hearing. Well, just the ugly thumping sound must have been when you think right. about it. Right. So, so they, they, they killed him. And mm -hmm. they didn't have to worry about him. So And nobody, the only person that was really pissed about Billy Bats missing was John Gotti. Yeah. And, and even with the body, that was a weird thing, too, because... Um, you know, so, you know, obviously it was a, you know, it was an unsanctioned hit. You can't, you can't touch a made guy. And so, uh, so they had to get rid of Billy's body. You know, they weren't going to just leave it on the street. And, and so. It was anyway, at a dog, and it wasn't under a bridge. It was at a dog kennel. It was at a dog. Yeah. Yep. They're saying no one would look there. So they put a, put him there and then. They uh, sold the dog kennel. They sold the, the dog kennel and then they had to dig up his his body. It had been there decomposing for for months 
and then then they reburied him. Again. And Henry Hill said it was like he was he was torturing them and hounding them from his grave because yes. the whole thing with Billy Bats wound everything. Yeah, I mean it, it. It was they were always looking over their shoulder. Yeah, uh, and 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 the fact that Jimmy Burks did it, and the reason Jimmy Burks got away with it is one, he was a hell of an earner. He was. And he uh, then he pulls off the Lathansa heist, so he's still yep. getting he's still getting a pass, right? And uh, he's not he's not a mob he's not Italian he's not a made man. This is a guy that works right. with all the families. Yeah, and so exactly. And so okay, so so he's dead, and uh, mm -hmm. we're going to get to the part where uh, John Gotti's pretty angry about this. Yeah, and there's another guy that Tommy DeSimone killed too. And that's a guy named Ronald Foxy Giroth. He yeah. was a Gambino soldier. Uh, yeah. He was exactly, he was the, he was like Billy Bats. Yeah. Tommy DeSimone was connected to that. Everybody suspected that he killed him. Mm -hmm. So DeSimone killed him, a Gambino. Yeah. He's involved yeah. in the Bats. Yep. A Gambino. Yeah. And so at that point, something has to be done right okay so yeah and it ends up happening you know basically nine years after you know billy bats is killed and so yeah so you know it, it's strange you know why it would take that long but it's just, it's just the way it is you know they're they're going to you know when it comes to retribution and and everything you know they there were the thing is, there were rumors floating about this. They weren't necessarily sure. But then through time, you know, John Gotti and the Gambinos realized, yeah, that he was a guy that did this. And so anyway, they, and the killing uh, happened in when 79, was it? Uh, and yeah, in, in 80, uh, I believe, is, is when the, when it happened. Okay. And, and so, so what I what I what I made sure to is I checked mm -hmm. John Gotti's dates. He was not in prison at that time. He wasn't in prison, right? And right. so, so yeah, the theory on that is that uh, basically, and this is according to Henry Hill. Um, so John Gotti, he's saying John Gotti himself pulled the trigger. Well, on, I'm, I'm going to read that from the book. Oh, okay, go ahead. Okay, so we, I don't want to touch that yet. Okay. okay. So uh, then there's Joe's Do Joe Dog's Agro. Now Joe Dog's Agro killed two people. Who were they? He killed a oh, lot of people, but two yeah, particular but people. Two of his brothers, right? Tommy D. Simone's brothers. Yep. So that you know, the, can you imagine the you know, the friction on the street here? They this mm -hmm. guy killed two of Tommy's brothers, and and one of the brothers was a rat. So yep. So uh, Tommy D. Simone had to live it down. They yeah. people kind of he he had to try to prove himself and be that extra mean killer. Yes, because his brother exactly. was a known rat and killed. Right. Him. Yes, exactly. Okay. Okay. So he's killed for it. And, uh, but on January 14th, 1979, Tommy D. Simone goes missing. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, and she said that she hadn't, uh, his wife said she hadn't seen him in, in a, a few weeks before reporting him. And she didn't right. report him because that was normal with him. He, he, he'd hook up with one of his wenches and disappear. Right. He yeah. did it all the time. Yeah, so I, I think I, they, they believe he was either killed in December of 78 or January of 79. Right. And yeah. so there were, there were in the movie they show where he's he's going into the, uh, so he didn't go into no basement, first of all. In the no. movie, they had him pulling up into a house. He goes in the basement. They shoot right. him. Right. Right. Okay. So Henry Hill in his, in his book basically said that uh, Gotti went to, um, he went to uh, Paul Vario, right? Paul Vario, he was upset, mm -hmm. you know. Here's, some, here's what he says. He says, this effing De Simone whacked two of my top earners, and I let him go a long time. Now he gets what he wants to be made. I'm going to sit quietly. I mean, that's as bad as putting a cactus up my butt. Uh, understand what I'm saying, Paulie, and pr people, the reason I'm not swearing and using the words is YouTube monet mm -hmm. monetizes everything now. Right. And Vario says, John, uh, what do you suppose I should do? And Gotti said, Paulie, all I want is what's fair. 
I want to whack the bastard. I want to give, I, I want you to give me the green light. And based on everything that was laid out there with De Simone, a constant source of agita for Vario, the request was considered timely and well received, and thus green he, he greenlighted it. Now, right. so they wanted to get rid of him because he was a wild man in the street, pretty much, right? Yeah, exactly. And and what's what's interesting too is when this happened, I mean, Polly had kind of a love hate relationship with him because he could he could depend on Tommy to you know do anything that he wanted and also um you know he had been with the crew a long time so he was uh they he had actually been put on the list to be made and that's how god he knew about it because remember whenever someone gets made they they have to push their their name around all the families and 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 they've got a period of time to object or not and and god he objected you know so basically bruno Facchillo and peter vario uh, mm -hmm. I guess that's Polly Vario's brother. We're going to vouch mm -hmm. for him when he was going to get made. They were supposed yeah. to pick him up, drive him to where he had uh, was going to have a little ceremony. Yeah. Uh, and when Jimmy called to find out about it, uh, mm -hmm. they said it had to be taken care of. Yeah. And Burks knew he couldn't do anything about it. Burks was hoping, you know, he wanted Burks wanted a friend and someone near him that was a made man. Right. He, yeah, that was part of Burke's, uh, you know, it's more selfish on Burke's part because he, you know, he knew that, you know, that he could only, he always, he could never be made. He need to have someone that was made to be able to act in his, his best interest. And so, you know, he really utilized Tommy. And so, you know, it was a, they had a good business relationship for many years. And so here's what they said. They said the night De Simone expected to be inducted into the mob, Vario's mm -hmm. son, or it was his Vario's son, so I stand corrected, drove yep. him from his home in Ozone Park, Queens, to Belmont in the Bronx. De Simone wore a double-breasted black blue blazer suit, a mm -hmm. starched blue shirt, and a beige silk tie, the book says. De Simone yes. was led into the basement of Don Vito's restaurant. Several old men were seated around a card table. The candles gave the room a dim light. De Simone was surprised to see John Gotti, a Gambino. He thought this induction uh, would be a Lucchese affair. God, right there, you should have tried to turn and run. Uh, yeah. <laughs> if that's the way it happened. Yeah. And we're just reading you the version of the story. We're not saying this is the way it happened. But right. I kind of like this version, to be yeah. honest with you, because yeah. of the swagger, the way you'll, you'll, you'll see what I mean. De Simone was led to the bay. Uh, and basically, De Simone was surprised to see Gotti there. He thought his induction would be a Lucchese affair. Uh, welcome, Tommy. Congratulations, Gotti said. Pull a chair up to the table and sit comfortably. This is not an ordered, ordinary day in your life. I want you to know. Uh, De Simone sat down. Within three seconds, Gotti pulled a silencer, equipped 38 Colt Magnum from his inner breast pocket, and drilled three bullets into De Simone's cranium. Pa, pa, pa. Okay. <laughs> De Simone's head blasted forward, and with a thud, a 10-pound boulder slumped uh, onto the card table, blood seeping and leeching onto the green felt tabletop. Gotti belt, uh, buttoned up his camel cashmere overcoat, straightened his lapels, and walked out of the room with a wanton, stri with a wanton stride. Personally, you know, I think that's cool as shit. <laughs> yeah <laughs> i don't that know pretty cool <laughs> i mean you know listen it may not have happened nobody yeah. knows this is yeah. 1979 nobody knows you know they this is a whole different era you know yeah. uh, of people that exist now and back then things were the way they were yeah and uh so what happened after he was blown away well then um you had basically wasn't too much longer. What was it in 1980 that um, Henry Hill became a government witness and sold out his friends? Everybody. Yep. Jimmy. Yep. Burke. I think it's what 50 convictions, including yeah, yeah Burke, uh, Paul Vario, Vario. Mm -hmm. Var you know, Burke Vario, uh, a bunch of people, and yep. uh, Paul Vario got four years, and mm -hmm. then he got ten years added on in another case. Yeah. But, you know, the fact was he was an older man and he was unhealthy when yeah. he went into prison. So he died in prison. 
Right. Tim Burke uh, received a sentence of 12 years and would get yep. 20 years added on, charged yep. with another murder case. He would right. die in prison in 1996. Right. Henry Hill lived out the rest of his life in the witness protection. As we know, Henry Hill came in and out, in and out. Can mm -hmm. you imagine if Henry Hill was alive now with this insanity on YouTube? Oh, my gosh, yeah. He'd be going around on everybody's show. You just know he would be. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. Without a care in the world. Yeah. I'm sorry. That would have been a great character to have running around. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, there's another big, we you know, we, we've been talking about, about people that have given information. But yeah. he, would say, he was at the same level as the people we just recently talked about. Sure. And, you know, you got, you know, you got Mikey Scars. Yeah. You know, and then uh, you got Chris Passiello. I mean, Mikey Scars, 80 people, Passiello, yep. 70. And they're mm -hmm. saying that uh, Hill, 50 people. Yep. 50, 50 people. Yep. So between those three, we're talking uh, 180 people. Those three yeah. were responsible for sending away. Right. And that doesn't even include the people that accepted pleas because of these guys. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, they just, uh, you know, put, you know, that that's part of it too, is that, you know, pe the people have to make their own decision on, on what happened. I mean, we know that the movie, you know, they, it wasn't how it happened, but, you know, Gotti's, um, I do believe that Gotti was uh, involved in it, you know, because he may not pull the trigger, but he wanted right. his revenge. Yeah, I mean, that's that's those my are two, part. Those yeah. are two people that Gotti associated with. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it was like a slap in his face. Yes. Yeah, I mean they were they were very close. I mean that part we know. We also know that you know he was very upset about it, and and so I well, and we and know he was that very he, close to Foxy Droth. Yes, he, that he was. As for Billy, uh, as for Billy Bats, we don't know. And Billy Bats' real right. name was. Uh, yeah, the uh, ben, William. You, you ben say Dina. that it ben, 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 yeah. Yeah. Ben, yeah. Yeah. It ben, says Benya. Ben, yeah. But we yeah. know for sure that Gotti was very close to Ronald Foxy Giraffe. Yeah. Uh, as for uh, Billy Bats, we don't know, but we do know that they associated one another. Right. Uh, because one, they all lived in the same area. He was a Gambino, and all the Gambinos knew each other. And if they lived in the same area, they went to the same right. social clubs and stuff. Right. And yeah, when he got out, he was, he was, when Billy ba Bass got out of prison, you know, he was looked up to because he just did his time. And everybody yep. said that he just never said a word. He never complained. He right. just thought he was coming home, and he was going to get what he left on the street when he went to prison. Yeah. Yep, definitely. You know, you gave me some documents of of his court of stuff. You know, yeah. it's amazing that what could be found. You found that yeah. court stuff when he's in court. Yeah. And uh, you know, for people that says the mob ain't involved in drugs. Yeah. This guy was dealing drugs on his charges in the fifties. Yep. All those guys that wanted to, all those people that wanted to, Galente, all of them, they were all dealing yep. drugs. Oh yeah, yeah. So, I mean that. That that's what's funny. I mean, most of the rules there, you know, they get broken a lot. You know, they, you know, you're not supposed to do drugs or or deal drugs. But they and, all were doing it. They, they were, were all doing, doing it. it, just like uh, you know, a lot of people uh, are with other people's wives and and other other things that are broken. So you know, that's just part of that life. That unfortunately, there's a lot of you know hypocrisy when it comes to the rules. And they, it was also out there that uh, Tommy D. Simone uh, raped uh, Henry Hill's wife. Yep, that's what I wanted to bring up. Yep, again, that that the thought was that my, that might have been a reason. Um, we don't know if there's if that's true or not. Or they also said that she was having an affair with Paul Vario. Yeah, uh, I mean Paul Vario. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you know, I that yeah, and that was one of the things that was out there, and that was from other informants had mentioned that as well. You would so, take the ten homeliest you know. mob mobsters of all time. Paul Vario will be right in that top ten. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. but you know what? He's a mobster. Yeah, you know, and 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 he not only was a mobster, he 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 was a stand up guy. Yeah, Jimmy Burks was an evil, evil man. Yeah, he was. They try to make him in the movie look all this cool. No, this guy, this guy, look at 
look at his eyes. Yeah. Look at those eyes. That guy looks exactly. like someone just got his dish of food wrong in a restaurant. Can you imagine being yeah. a waiter, waiter and you got to come back to him? Oh, gosh. <laughs> yeah, he, he's like the uh, Lucchese's version of Joe Watts, you know, someone that he had a lot of authority within the family, even though he, he wasn't he didn't have a button. He still had a lot of authority because he made money. And that's that's really what Paul Vario wanted. He was, you know, good earners. And plus, he was part of the Lufthansa affair, you know, pretty much masterminded that. So. And and I believe that Elvis Presley. I'm sorry, that's not Elvis. That's John Gotti. <laughs> yeah. uh, John Gotti, <laughs> handsome bastard, ain't he? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you know, and it's just like uh, that's '65. Yeah. So you know, he he did some time in the '60s too. Yeah. But you know, the dates could he have done it with the dates? Yes. It would yeah. did he know about it being done on this? Without a doubt, mm -hmm. because two of his people that his friends got killed. Right. Uh, did he order it? No one's going to ever know. Did he do it? No one's ever going to know. Right. But if I had my version of the way it was, it would be like of Gotti being in the room, taking him out and strutting out of the room. Yeah. Yeah. I like that version. That yeah. I love that version. version. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, it would have went up to, you know, saying like that, even though he was a, he was uh, Tommy wasn't a, a made guy, but you know, with him talking to Paul Vario, I'm sure, you know, it went up, it could have went to up all the way to at least, uh, you know, Neil Delacroach, you know, would have known about it. And oh, Neil, maybe, definitely, yeah. yeah, maybe even big Paul himself, uh, Castellano, but at least uh, Delacroach would have known about it. And here's the timeline you got to remember. Gotti was at the right, at the top of his power in the late 80s and mm -hmm. 1990 until he got arrested. Right. And and at that time, he's just not somebody that you would do a movie on and start mentioning his name in the movie. Right. Especially in 1988. Right. Yeah, and they, they were pretty careful about that. That's why even like with Jimmy Burke's name, they call him Jimmy Conway because he hadn't died yet. Uh, he didn't die right. till 96. So so they would either change the names of, of people or... Well, they Vario, just oh, they, I forgot what they changed it to in the movie. Do you, yeah. I don't know if you remember, but they changed that in the movie also, which was... Yeah, a, yeah I can't remember what his name was, but you know, I knew Conway was Jimmy, but... Um, Paul, people, Barry, please, hit the, please hit the like button. Subscribe if you have not. Now, one yeah. thing I've noticed is a lot of people have not been getting, uh, uh, they have not been hitting that bell to get their um, oh, notification reminder. Uh, yeah. If you have not hit the reminder, people, please hit the reminder. I have checked and I've seen the reminders kind of low with the with with our with our stats. We're yeah. doing very well. We're averaging almost five thousand views every day. And, uh, you know, we're a small show, but that still makes me happy that we, we're, we're at that point. Yeah. We just hit 9,300 in, in subs. Yeah. And uh, show's doing good. Uh, so I'm very happy about that. James, is there anything you, else you want to say? Oh, and also, if you want to donate, there's a little heart underneath here you can donate. Underneath yeah. here also you can donate to the show. If yeah. you like, uh, there's a cash app. If you don't, no problem. Yeah. No, I mean, you know, for me, you know, I thought this was really interesting. You know, when you look at uh, specifically, you know, about Billy Bats, I didn't know much about him until I you know, started. Yeah. Yeah. It's doing amazing. This research, when you read yeah. when you read the court report, when you mm -hmm. read the trial, it's like yeah. Billy Bats comes to life. Yeah, exactly. And and so they think he got made, you know, it, there's a lot of questions on when he actually got made. It, it had to have been probably in 56 or 57. Well, they said uh, but, 15 years before Gotti. Yeah, yeah, before and that John would have Gotti. been, and Gotti was around 76, 77. I don't believe that he got made in 62 or 63 because, one, he was in, he was in prison. prison. He got made before yeah. prison. And, yeah, and then in '57, if you remember uh, the the commission. No, I don't I remember. I don't remember. <laughs> sorry, okay, I was born in 1960. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. When I was born, he yeah. was still in jail. Yeah, yeah. No, what I was going to say is that they weren't. Um, there was uh, there was the 
they wouldn't make anybody because Albert Anastasia was selling buttons. And so between like 57 and, and 75, no one was getting made unless someone died and they could replace They wanted them. to phase those guys out, basically. Right, exactly. And so the, uh, you know, I think it had to have been in, you know, 56, 57 when he got made because, like you say, he was in prison. But no, he was very uh, fascinating to me, you know, because no one knew anything about him. And, you know, we don't even have a picture of him, but, you know, there's all these documents about him and everything. And then um, obviously the story with John Gotti being involved in, you know, Tommy DeSimone's death. And someone that wrote was, a big story on, and they used this at the top of their story, a couple of them. Yeah. Uh, you know, usually that's something I would do. So, the, yeah. <laughs> you know, and yeah, it's like, I mean, uh, yeah, I, yeah, I thought it was probably him. But then, you know, I as I went through and did research, you know, seeing, hey, that's the dude out of Philadelphia. So, yeah, I don't know. It's it's very interesting. Well, but, no, we, it's got, we have some experts around here to like the correct people on stuff. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, we'll, we'll put that out first ahead of time. Yeah. So yeah. they don't correct, you know, they'll still correct us about something, but we just right. don't any, anyway. Right. But no, this is, you know, this is an interesting story, though. I mean, that's one of my favorite movies, obviously, but. Um, and the movie had nothing, was like so far off. Right. You know, it was off, it was off with everything, you know. Yeah. Like Paul Vario would not let Henry Hill come into his house. No. And and Henry Hill didn't, didn't. Look Everybody, Henry Hill had a reputation on the street being a druggie, being yeah. drunk. Exactly. Paul he Mario, wasn't a good looking he, guy or anything like no, that. No, he was not. He was not Ray Ray Liotta. Ray Leo. No. He was not, you know, not even close. As a matter of fact, no. this is him uh after he got his teeth fixed. <laughs> uh thank you to the US government for that. And then this was Paul Barrio. Tell yeah. me a woman that wouldn't want that man right there. <laughs> yeah. I'm not talking about Paul Zarino either. But you know yeah. these gangsters, they're they're lucky because they have these handsome, uh, uh, you know, Jimmy Burks is a, a good looking man, I guess. He just yeah. has those eyes. Yeah. You know, if anybody has a picture of Billy Bats, please let us know. Yeah. Send it to us. We would love to see a picture of Billy Bats. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure there's somebody out there that found one. If yeah. Billy Bats' family's around, if you have a picture of them. At a Christmas party, I'd love to see what Billy Bats looks like, wouldn't you? Yeah, I would love to. Because everybody's going to think that Frank Vincent is, you know, that was Frank Vincent's. Uh, he only had a little role in that, but yeah, he took that role and ran with it, didn't he? Yep, and and gave one of the best uh, lines ever in the history of cinema. Too. Oh my God, go get your shine. I mean, go get your shine box. I mean, yeah, you know, if you could sit down and give those 20, 20 25 great lines yep that's right there it has to be right up there that's yeah. right there with uh make them an offer they can't refuse or right. uh you know or the godfather had like 10 yeah. great lines you know oh yeah definitely okay well i appreciate you being here sure. and uh hopefully we'll get this out by sunday yeah otherwise it'll probably be monday okay thank you people i hope you like it uh i'm on my diet my third day in a row i have had no sugar in my body and uh, matter of fact, I am drinking Gatorade Zero that sucks ass. <laughs> yeah. It sucks. Oh, God. I like Gatorade without the Zero. Yeah. So I'm trying to teach myself to drink this garbage. <laughs> and, yeah. Uh, they say you get used to it sooner or later. But I've been drinking Gatorade for 10 years. And now oh, regular yeah. Gatorade. Or mm -hmm. what I used to do is I used to take this and mix it with half. Oh, yeah, yeah. Gatorade to cut right. down the sugar. But, well, but, good luck on that, though. I mean, I, I think that's that's cool that you're doing that. I want to I get mean, down to 180 pounds of pure muscle. Well, well, I'm rooting I, for you on that. Yeah, you know damn well that ain't never going to happen. <laughs> maybe I'll get down to like maybe uh, 200 pounds of pure flab, hanging <laughs> flab, but at least yeah. my face will go down. But yeah. anyway. You have a good one, my man. Yep. Thank you so Everybody, much. Thank you so much. I hope you people enjoyed this.